God is saying the old ways, the old means, the previous programs and strategies, they won't work in this new era. And we heard it again to do today, new means new, because there are deeper levels of hunger that God is releasing in the earth to, pro to provoke his people to pursue the fullness of what he has promised to pour out. And there is a deep thirsting for the new wine. So to drink of it, we have to walk in a new way. To drink of it, we have to, we have to seek in a new way. It's time for us to try a new thing. So there's this story about William Booth. For those who may not know, he's a founder of the Salvation Army. And that's an evangelistic ministry that would take entire cities for Christ. They would all come in. They were called the Salvation Army because literally when they would come into a new city, a new territory, they would actually come with a marching band and, you know, like the army of the Lord singing songs and declaring the presence of God is here and they're taking the territory for Christ. And they contended in intercession for those territories. And they engage in the preaching of the gospel in all these evangelistic efforts, seeing multitudes saved and set free. But some of the Salvation Army evangelists were sent to the ghettos of Los Angeles. That was back in the 20s. The 1920s. And after three years of seeing no results, it's like, we're doing all of what you trained us to do, what we were trained to do. We're doing all of what's been effective in other cities in previous seasons. Come on, this, it's worked before. Why is it not working now? And after three years of seeing no results, they were ready to throw in the towel. They were ready to leave. They were ready to abandon their posts in that city. And they sent a telegram over to General William Booth saying, it just won't work. We've tried everything and the gospel is just not being received here. And a couple days later, they received in response a two-word telegram from General Booth that said, try tears. And this William Booth story was part of the Lord's response to inquiring of him back in October, what's on your heart for 2022? What's on your heart for this new year? And his voice came in a whisper saying, I want 2022 to be the year of tears. And in asking and inquiring of the Lord, what does this mean? He began, he, he spoke those two words from General Booth, try tears. And he also spoke some phrases from a sermon by Paul Cain, one of the Kansas City prophets. Where Paul Cain said, there will be no public reaping without some public weeping. The greatest reapers in this world are the greatest weepers. I'm going to say that again for the ones in the back to hear. There will be no reaping without weeping, says the Lord. Psalm 126 verse 6 says, those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. And the Lord is saying, I am returning tears to the church. I am wooing my bride to join me not only in the intimacy chamber, but to also join me in the weeping room and align her heart and her, and with mine to pray and prophesy from there. If you receive Receive this gift, says the Lord. And so in tears, in this new year, I will cause you to reap songs of joy. If you receive this gift and so in tears, I will cause the harvest to spring up before you and you will return with sheaves in your hand and the sounds of revival and the manifest substance of revival will come as you weep, as you weep over cities, as you weep over nations, as you weep over churches and children with deep travail. You will birth the new wineskin in this season. So let's unpack this a bit. Psalm 126.6. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. In another translation, it says, he that goes forth weeping, bearing, 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 
precious seed to sow shall doubtless, ha, huh, doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing sheaves with him. It says we must go forth. It says we must go out weeping. That implies we must be willing to partner with God in a new way, position ourselves differently so we can hear his heart, so we can see what he sees and we can say what he says. We have to be willing to get uncomfortable, inconvenience ourselves so that we are rightly postured in that place of persevering prayer with weeping and travail going beyond words and waiting in his presence for the Holy Spirit groans beyond familiar words and phrases and things that we religiously say in our prayers to align us with the mysteries that are on God's heart going beyond what we've prayed before, beyond what we've seen, beyond what we've known, beyond weeping over things that we've wept over before, but now being awakened to care about new things, to contend for different things, to truly discern what is on God's heart and partner with him. It says we go caring or bearing seed to sow. We bear, we bear, come on, within our womb. God is looking for ones who will become a spiritual womb for him, who are going to bear, come on, the seeds of revival within them, who are going to cultivate the deposit of the seeds of God within us and are going to release them, come on, we're going to cultivate that within us. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a 20 second cry when you're in a church service and a phrase from the preacher moves your heart. This is about you coming into the secret place with God and being in there where he can cultivate within you, where, he, where you will conceive the visions of God, where you will conceive the heart of God and the passions of God. It's caring. It's bearing. It's nurturing the heart of God within you. It's being willing to receive and carry the burden of the Lord. And the word burden is a word that people do not like to hear. But when we're close to him, when we're knit together with him, he promises, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Just stay with me in that place of prayer. And it says we carry them. We carry this burden of the Lord. We carry these tears as seeds to sow. Our tears are liquid prayers. And every drop, every tear, a seed of his word that we're sowing into situations and into lives, into cities and into regions and nations. We're sowing seeds of his word, seeds of his righteousness, seeds of his justice, seeds of his kind intentions, seeds of his perfect will. Isaiah 55, 11, the Lord promises... So shall my word be that goes forth from your mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. You sow in tears. You will reap according to the word of the Lord. And it says we sow in tears. We will return with songs of joy, songs of hope, songs of faith, songs of fresh vision. Come on, you'll return with revived dreams, joyful expectancy of all the good things that God has prepared. You'll return with songs of the good news. You'll return with a thundering word of the Lord within you from the place of weeping. You'll raise up to war. He will raise you up to war and you will return empowered with songs of deliverance when you go out sowing in tears you'll also return with a joyful yes from a tenderized heart of flesh that is capable of responding to the Holy Spirit's nearness and promptings a renewed willingness to move out of the safety of the church 
and influence society. A heart willing and ready to obey all that he says, here I am, Lord, send me. When you sow in tears, you'll return with wisdom and revelation for revival and reformation.